now that we have some uh, machinery for doing calculus with vector valued functions, let's return to sort of the uh, one of the main inspirations we had for coming up with vector valued functions in the first place, and that is to describe motion in space. So suppose we have a vector valued function that tells us the position of some object that's moving around. Um, notice that because it is telling us position as a function of time, t has to be in time units. Usually, I mean, unless I say otherwise, I, I'll guess we'll say this is in seconds. And um, the units for the coordinates of our vector valued function have to be distance units so that we're describing position relative to some fixed point that's going to count as the origin of our coordinate system. So right, we have some object moving around through space. Um, so in this situation, uh, what do the derivatives of this vector valued function, um, what do they describe? Well, if our vector valued function is an x coordinate function, a y coordinate function, and a z coordinate function, then r prime, remember that's really dr dt, uh, that is going to be dx dt, dy dt, dz dt, dy dt, dz dt. Um, and of course, each, each one of these coordinates is a velocity in one direction. And so when we package all of these up into, uh, into a vector, we get, well, we get the overall velocity vector. Of course, this is, this is no surprise, right? So when we, uh, when we take the derivative of a position, we get a velocity. All right, notice that the units work out because um, uh, in the x-coordinate direction, x, dx is going to be in meters because x is in meters, or distance units, whatever the distance units happen to be. And this dt is in seconds, and so uh, the derivative is in meters per second, and that makes sense for a velocity. OK, what about a second derivative? Well. So a set, I guess since this is a velocity, often we'll call r prime just v of t since it's a velocity, and we'll just know that that means r prime. OK, so what is the second derivative of r? Well, it's the first derivative of the first derivative, right? But the first derivative we called velocity. Velocity is a vector. I should be writing my vector symbol. Um, and what is the rate of change of velocity? Well, it's acceleration, of course. Right? And the units come out right, because um, the numerator here uh, is velocity, and that's coming to us in meters per second, or distance per time, whatever those units happen to be. And um, this dt down here, that's in seconds. And so we get meters per second per second, or meters per second squared, or distance per time squared, if your units are different than meters and seconds, which is an acceleration unit. OK. Uh, so what about the magnitude of r prime? Well, uh, the, remember, the velo velocity tells you um, both a magnitude and a direction. It tells you how fast you're going and in what direction you are moving. And the magnitude is only the uh, magnitude tells you only the uh, how fast part of that. So magnitude of r prime, this is the magnitude of the velocity vector. And this is just how fast you're going, right? And not it's this is throwing away the direction information and only keeping the magnitude information. But how fast you're going, we have a name for that. That's speed. Okay, it, you're probably tempted to write s of t, but we will not write s of t for speed because um, because s means something else that we will see uh, soon. So when we want to write uh, speed, we'll usually just write magnitude of r prime or magnitude of v. Okay, so one thing to keep in mind about these uh, about these quantities and about um, r prime in particular is that since it's since it's the velocity vector, this velocity vector is always tangent to the path of travel. Right, that's going to be a, a, a key property um, that the velocity vector has. So whatever the path is. Um, that we're moving along at each point, right? We're at some, right? The origin of the coordinate system is down here somewhere. 
And so this is our position at some time. So it's R not it's R evaluated at some time, which I'm calling T naught. Um, the actually let me move my my coordinate system because the picture I was about to draw makes it look as though r is parallel to v, but that's not always the case. Okay, so put, let me put my origin down here, or over here. So here we have our position vector, so that's r of some time, t naught. And the velocity vector, if we're traveling left to right along this curve, the velocity vector r prime is at t naught, is going to be parallel to our path. Right? Um, the one exception to this, which isn't really an exception, but it kind of looks like an exception, is uh, what can happen for very strange paths is right, if we're at a certain spot, it's possible that we could pause momentarily and uh, rest at this spot for a little while, in which case our velocity vector would be the zero vector. The zero vector kind of counts as parallel to everything though. So really, uh, this velocity vector is still tangent to the curve. It's just that it happens to be zero. So uh, with this one little exception, um, we can treat the velocity vector as if it's always pointing tangent to the path of travel.